Hey everyone, I'm Jen. After Jesus ascended to heaven, his friends returned to Jerusalem to wait for the Holy Spirit, but they didn't have a clear idea of what to expect. Jesus had promised to be with them always, and then he left. They just couldn't wrap their minds around what was supposed to happen next. For 10 days, they waited. Then, early one morning as the believers met to pray, something incredible happened. First, a sound like rising wind filled the room. Do you hear that? Sounds like a storm coming. But the trees outside aren't even moving, not even a breeze. Wait, what's this? Flames glowing appeared, hovering in the air. Then, as the Jesus followers watched in wonder, the fire separated into tongues of flame resting over each head. All of them were filled with God's Spirit. This must be what Jesus meant when he said we were going to be baptized by the Holy Spirit. Well, that is what Peter said. But it's very likely that instead of Aramaic, the language of the Jewish people living in Jerusalem, Peter spoke in a different language. This is extraordinary, spectacular, phenomenal. Well, that is what they said, but they said it in many different languages and dialects. God's Spirit had given his followers the ability to speak in new languages. It was pretty amazing, but it wasn't just some show trick. See, Jewish people from all over the world were gathered in Jerusalem for Pentecost, or the Feast of Weeks. It was a special time of celebration at the beginning of the wheat harvest. These men and women spoke probably in a dozen or more different languages. Some were Jewish by birth, but others were foreigners who had accepted the Jewish faith. And when Jesus' followers came out and started speaking, all these visitors began to hear about Jesus in their very own language. Aren't these people from Galilee? How on earth are they speaking in my language? I see people in this crowd from Parthia, Mesopotamia, Cappadocia, Asia, Egypt, Rome. As far as I can tell, these Galileans have every language covered. What does all this mean? Not everyone took the believers seriously, though. They're just crazy. They're talking nonsense. Peter had always been a leader among the disciples, and he stepped up now to bring order to the chaos. My fellow Jews, we aren't speaking nonsense. The prophet Joel wrote, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my Holy Spirit on all people. Peter went on to explain the entire story of Jesus. Jesus of Nazareth was a man who had God's approval. God did miracles, wonders, and signs among you through Jesus. You put Jesus to death, but God raised him from the dead. We are all witnesses of this. Jesus has been given a place of honor at the right hand of God. He has received the Holy Spirit from the Father. It is Jesus who has poured out what you now hear. God has made him both Lord and Messiah. These words had a deep effect on many in the crowd. What should we do? All of you must turn away from your sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then your sins will be forgiven. You will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. I want to be baptized. Me too. Count me in. Everyone who accepted the message was baptized. That day, about 3,000 people joined the believers. The end.